Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the first video in my editing workflow series and it's about music. Finding music for your projects, adding it, cutting to the beat, making that song fit, and many other tips too. Now, I'm a Final Cut Pro 10 user, so the techniques will be shown using that software. Regardless of what you're using, the concepts and ideas will be the same, but obviously the techniques will vary. So yeah, let's get right to it. It's a question I get asked all the time. Where do you get your music? It doesn't seem like a lot of people know about it, but nearly 100% of my music comes from the YouTube Audio Library. You can access it by logging into your YouTube account, going to Creator Studio, clicking on Create, and then Audio Library. Now there's just hundreds and hundreds of songs and it seems like they're adding new music all the time. It's a really great resource, especially if you're just getting started because all the music is free for YouTube creators. Now from time to time, I also grab music off of SoundCloud's Music for Monetize section. There are some really good tracks in there too. They are also free, but you may have to hunt a little bit more to find exactly what you're looking for. Also, pay close attention to the attribution requirements for each song. Now, I'll put a link in the description so you can check that out as well. Okay, so I'm in Final Cut Pro now and I already have an event set up called Music Demo. And I have a bunch of clips in here and I've also got some music. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by creating a new project. And I'll just call this project Music Demo as well. And we want it to be 1080p and 23.98 frames per second. In this example, I'm just gonna start off by dragging in my music track. Now, that's not quite where I want it, so I'm just gonna lift it off the storyline. And you can see that Final Cut creates this video slug. And that's where all our video clips will go. Now, if I did want to start with some clips, I can just go up here to my B-roll stuff. I'll just choose some favorites and I'll drag them in. And then if I go back to all my clips and grab my music track, I can just drag that in and end up in exactly the same place. So when I'm using a music track in my video, I typically sync my cuts to the beat or other music transitions. Now, this is really easy to do. Just wanna make sure that your music track is selected. And then starting at the beginning, I'll hit the space bar to start playing. And then I hit the M key each time I want to mark a beat. And then later on, if I wanna go back and mark other transitions or other beats, I can do that using the same technique. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and I'm gonna hit the space bar and I'm gonna start marking my beats. Okay, so now that we have all the beats marked, let's look at a few other useful tips. In the process of marking the beats, if things got crazy and you made a whole bunch of mistakes and you just really wanna start over, there's a really simple way to do that. So we can just click on our index, we can go to tags, make sure the markers are selected, and then just go down and we'll just choose, we'll just grab our entire range of markers and hit delete and boof, they're all gone. So I'm gonna just hit undo and turn them back on. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And if you wanted to adjust some of the positions of the individual markers, if they're not quite right, well, that's easy to do as well. Just right click on them, delete, put your skimmer where you want that marker, make sure your audio track is selected and just hit M to re-add it. Now, two other handy shortcuts. You can hit Control, single quote, and that will move you to the next marker. And if you hit Control, semicolon, that will bring you to the previous marker. So one other awesome thing about markers is that they stick with the clip. So let me just zoom out here a little bit. Even if I just hack off the end of this song and get rid of it, well, if I just drag the song back out, all my markers are still there. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I, I already have a whole bunch of footage in this event and I've gone through and favorited a bunch of clips. So let's just start bringing them into our video. So I'm just gonna grab this first B-roll clip here, drag it over top of the video slug and hit replace. So first clip is in. Now for all my subsequent clips, I can just click on them and I can drag and drop them in or I can select a bunch of them 
and I can hit E, which will just append them to the timeline. And that's a really quick way to get your clips in. Okay, so we have our first bunch of clips in the timeline here. And as you can see, the end of our clips are not matching up with our beat markers. So there's a bunch of ways we can fix that. One of the simplest methods is just to grab the clip and drag it to the correct length. We could also come up here and grab our blade tool and then just line it up with the marker, click to cut, switch back to our select tool and delete that clip. Stretch this one out a little bit. And one other method, which is I use all the time because it's really a really nice shortcut, is we just move our skimmer onto the, the beat marker and then we hit option right square bracket and that cuts from the skimmer to the end of the clip. So I'm gonna put one more marker here because I want my, I want my last segment to end there. So M to put a marker and I'm just gonna hit option right square bracket. Oops, make sure I have my clip selected. Option right square bracket and that trims it up right to my marker. So let's see what this looks like now. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'll just finish this off by adding the rest of the clips. I'm using my shortcut keys here. So control, single quote to move to the next marker and then option, right square bracket to trim the clip. That makes it really fast. Okay, and I'll just put a fade to black transition on the end here and just put in a little, maybe put in a three second slug at the end. And Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so our little demonstration video is complete, but if I zoom out, we can see that the music is just way too long. It doesn't fit our video. So how do we fix it and make it fit? Well, it's really quite simple actually. So I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna cut out, just a few seconds from the end here, I'm gonna cut out the music and then I'm gonna go to the end and just, just a few seconds before the music starts fading out, I'm gonna make another cut. Now I'm gonna delete that middle bit and then I'm gonna drag this other clip over and overlap it with the other clip. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here and now we don't need the slug on the end, so get rid of that. We basically want our music to fade out kind of near the end, so that's pretty close. Now what we wanna do is we've, we've marked all the beats in the song, so we just wanna line up our beat markers. And we're gonna give it a listen there and see how close we are. Well that, to my ears, sounds like it's bang on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shorten the length of the overlap. So I'll come back here, one marker, and I'll take my blade tool, I'll cut that and get rid of it. So then we want to, if I just zoom in a bit more here, you can see when I, when I hover over the audio track, you see how the, the cursor changes and you see this little fade audio out, this little adjustment knob appears. So I'm just gonna grab that and drag it over. So I'm gonna fade out the original audio and I'm gonna do kind of the opposite on the bottom track. I'm gonna fade in um, the shortened audio. So zoom out a bit here so you can see what's going on. Let's play that clip. Well, that sounds pretty good to my ears. I can't really detect a problem there. So obviously we have the beats lined up pretty good. And, and really that's, that's the secret there is you just need to make sure you're lining up the beats and you're good to go. So it's a really simple technique for shortening the length of your music. I always like to make sure that my music isn't too loud. So I don't want it peaking. If we look over here in our audio meters, we don't want it peaking over zero decibels because as soon as you start getting over zero decibels, you could be getting into some distortion. So, this isn't too bad, nothing's really peaking too much. If I zoom in a little bit 
on the audio here, you can see, yeah, it is, I mean, it is touching the red. So what we can do there is we can just maybe pull it down just by hovering over our volume level. We can just click on that and drag it down and maybe bring it down maybe one decibel just to keep it out of that red zone. Now, another way you can do it if you have just a section of audio that's kind of problematic, we can just go up and choose our range tool or press R and then we can just drag over the section. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna put in keyframes for you. So it's just gonna affect that section when you drag down the audio volume level there. So that's pretty cool. That's a pretty neat shortcut. So another thing I like to do is just kind of fade my music in at the start. So if we just hover over our audio track there, we see the adjustment knob and we can just pull that over and fade it in. If we want to get a little bit fancy, we can right click on that and it gives us a few options for smoothing out that fade. And same thing goes on the fade out. We kind of want that to really drift off nicely at the end of our video. And maybe we want to adjust that with a nice S curve. Okay, and that sounds pretty good. And the very last thing I like to do is just listen to the whole video from end to end, you know, put the headphones on and really immerse myself in the audio and just make sure that there's no problems and everything sounds as it should. One other thing I'd like to mention is for all my video editing work, I'm wearing over the ear headphones. I find they're really great for blocking out all the ambient room noise, allowing me to really focus in on the audio. It makes it much easier to detect and fix problems. My headphones of choice are the Sony MDR 7506. They're relatively inexpensive, they're good quality, they sound good, they feel good, and I've had this particular pair for almost eight years. So I'll put a link in the description if you guys wanna check them out for yourselves. Well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you learned a trick or two to add to your own video editing workflow. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and yeah, you guessed it. I will see you in the next one.